Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds, by nerds, hang out with this nerd. Nerdarchy's Ted. Hey, nobody got time for that? But perhaps if you were a chronomancer, you would. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy, the newsletter. Get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. We would have played around with the idea of a chronomancer in D&D. The spellcaster that has the power over maybe time and a little bit of space. All right, now... Mostly time. <laughs> as a whole, chronomancy is widely considered a bad thing because mucking about with time, you're, you're always making paradoxes and, you know, more than one dox is a, a, a bad thing. Ba -bum -bum. <laughs> so, yes, and also it is just a pain in the ass to deal with from the perspective of telling any kind of story <clears throat> where, where it can change. In RPGs, time travel has always, always been problematic. So instead of worrying about actual time travel, I think we're going to do things that we can kind of flavor as, you know, time effects. Right. So if you've got these small little snippets of seconds or like, oh, you know, you received this warning from the future, blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't know, divination magic. You might be able to have some of, some of these cool things that, that happen. So if you actually pull out a player's handbook and you look at the School of Divination, you know, the first thing that really is going to look at here is a portent. And as opposed to you taking the time to, you know, read the future, this is really, oh, you're receiving a message from the future that tells you about these things that you know, could possibly happen. And, you know, you save your dice rolls to be able to use them at just the right time i.e. use that information that you've given yourself to be able to step out of the way or strike a little bit more true. Yeah, I definitely like that idea. There's um, also in Xanathar's Guide to Everything, you also have the Divine Soul, which has some abilities that are kind of cool to cherry pick. One is you get access to, to the Cleric Spell list, right? So there's definitely some things you can reflavor re there, like... You know, healing wounds could just be undoing something that has happened, right? That you make it so it didn't happen; the wound never occurred. Or you you accelerate the body through time to the point that it heals itself. Yeah, both of those would work. Also, you get um, favored by the gods, right? And that is literally the ability to roll some extra dice for saving throws and things of that nature. Well, instead of instead of being empowered by the gods, it's just you know. You just know what's going to happen. You're looking at the pro you know, different probabilities, and you're picking the one that you think is going to be most beneficial to you, therefore getting to roll more dice. So, like, both of these work really well. Um, what is the, what is the, the level that they, the sorcerers get the keystone there? Uh, 18th. 18th. So you could mix two levels of divination wizard with 18 levels of sorcerer. Yeah, and, well, and you double start, up on you those You start dice. unflavoring once you get to the higher powers a little bit. It, it's that low level power that really works really well cuz things like otherworldly wings aren't going to be that great for uh for a time mage, you know. <laughs> but, you know, things like unearthly recovery works out where it's just really like you get a lot of healing which is just mastering your body and accelerating time for you or Ooh, we're turning back time for you, as the case may be. Like, and these are just some examples, but perhaps you could reflavor some of the abilities from either. Mm -hmm. You know, if your if your DM was willing to let you do that. And the other big place where you could do some reflavoring is spell casting. There is one other ability that jumps to mind when I think about uh, chronomancy and the ability to manipulate time, though, and that is the second level fighter ability, action, action surge. surge. Yep. Yeah, that that is. You know, a game-breaking ability to to some extent. You know, it, it's one of those things that I would say breaking, maybe changing. Game changing. My apologies. Yeah, it, it's it's really powerful, and it does allow you to step outside the normal rules of you can only cast one spell around unless you action surge. So it's it's a cool ability that's like okay, well, this is something that anybody would really like having. So anything that lets you manipulate dice is another great way to simulate controlling time as well. So taking Lucky would, would work for you, feet-wise. And, you know, you mentioned spells. So let's, let's get into 
you know, the, the, the spell angle and how we would, you know, flavor or, you know, change the description of particular spells and, and how we would call that chronomancy as opposed to just, it's just magic. Well, any of the spells that, you know, cause the restrain condition, and there isn't necessarily a visible effect, hold monster, hold person, that kind of things, I think are great because you can just freeze time for that person and bam, they can't move. And, and that's how you would reflavor that. So th those work perfectly. Along the same lines, you know, haste or slow is that, you know, speeding up or slowing down time, you know, in, in such a way that it's like, okay, well, for slow, well, I'm just slowing you. For haste, well, maybe I'm slowing everybody or speeding myself up. You know, both of those work out, you know, really well and, and you know, give you that effect of I'm mucking, about, mucking around with time. Also, you had mentioned off camera the idea of certain reaction spells, like absorb elements, or uh, I think even better would be the shield spell. Mm -hmm. You know, so bo both of these kind of things, you know, as opposed to, oh, well, I'm reacting now. It's, I've taken the effect, but I want to go back in time and un undo that. So my reaction spell is really, well, I go back in time and, and make that not happen. Or, you know, make myself slightly resistant to what's going on. And, you know, now I'm better prepared because... You know, I've got, you know, I had the foreknowledge of getting hit with it first. And then you get the, the fun role playing of being able to be like, oh man, that, that, that sword slash hurt. Oh wait, it didn't, you know. So you could play around with like the, the time angle of RP. For me, like some fun ones would be like disintegrate instead of, you know, just, you just, instead of like being a disintegration ray is you hit them and, you know, they get the full burn of time. And if they were to it be disintegrated by the spell they do turn to dust but only because you've aged them so far into the future that's all that remains yeah so you know a lot of spells like that you could you could go in you could twist around and it, it's really about viewing the whole thing from another perspective so if you can take take an idea you know feet spell magic item and say well it, it, how could this be time related slowing down speeding up you them everyone you, know, you could have a lot of fun with it yeah i i mean i think it spells like vampiric touch that might be one you wouldn't think of because it does damage to someone else but heals you so like if you know maybe it sets up like a temporal discordance between you and the other person right uh, it, uh reversing time or or speeding up time to a point where they've been injured at, while at the same time it uh, d does the opposite for you. Right. So I, I think if you just, like, that is the key to me for for building a Chronomancer more than anything. I would just play with the spells. As a player, is that what I would, I, that's what I would want to do. I would try and pick something that's kind of really general as far as my caster type. And then I would play with how I can re-envision the spells. They work exactly the same. But I just describe them differently. And, you know, the trigger is a little bit different. You know, inst you know, instead of working this particular way, no, it's all because of time. It's your ability to manipulate time. Now, maybe at a later time we'll go back and we could actually create a wizard tradition for the Chronomancer. It it's not too hard. I mean, there's only, you know, you only need to come up with like four or five abilities, I think. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the tough part is, you know, you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to get the ability to put spells in your book for you know for less but there is one mage tradition that already does it that way so we do have something that we could look at when we do build it and that's the that's the war wizard because they get arcane deflection at second level as well as tactical wit so it kind of does set the the building blocks for what Wizards of the Coast thinks is appropriate for replacing that one ability with. Right. I mean, it would be a little bit better if we had maybe one or two more to see what the range is or the scope was, but we have at least something to work with. Right. So what do you guys think? You know, does does D&D need a Chronomancer? Uh, what do you think about our way to envision one with the rules we already have in place? You can put those comments down below while you're at it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can check us out over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.